Traffic is everywhere. Smartphone apps to share rides could mean the end of traffic jams. But still, many apps fail at guaranteeing users a ride. Assistant professor Niels Agatz reveals how to make these ride-sharing apps a success. Look at this. Traffic can be a real pain. And with more and more people using their cars in the future, this will get even worse. And one of the reasons we see traffic congestion is that we're not efficiently using our capacity. There's only one person in a car with four seats. In order to save money, bring back pollution and cut traffic, carpooling was launched, in which drivers share their ride with others. But this traditional way of ride sharing didn't succeed as drivers needed to decide in advance whether or not to use it. Carpooling wasn't very flexible for its users and just didn't match with the new ways of working. But now everybody has a smartphone, so that makes it very easy to communicate and to coordinate your travel plans in real time. And this creates the opportunity we call dynamic ride sharing. Many different types of ride sharing apps were launched shortly after. People could now indicate if they needed a ride, offer a ride, and indicate where to. Many people became users of the apps. But these current apps only facilitate easy communication. And we discovered that in order for this concept to really work, you need to offer automated matches. So for example, in an area like this, where you have roughly 7 million people, if only 1% of them would use an app like this, they would have an 80% likelihood of finding a match, and then they would save roughly 20% of their travel costs. So dynamic ride sharing has the potential to save money for the participants and reduce all the negative side effects of traffic. We have shown that in theory this can work, so now you have to make this happen in practice.